So I'm going to refer to this as a rifle buttstock cover, and I'm going to keep calling it that probably because that's what you most commonly see these on is uh, either lever action or bolt action rifles. But in this case, it's actually going on a smoothbore flintlock, which is not technically a rifle. But it's made the same way, so we're going to keep using that terminology. So it's important to have a straight top on these stocks. If you, That would really simplify your pattern. If you've got a curved top or you've got a raised cheek piece or something like that, it'll make it very difficult to make a pattern for this. You've got to start um, piecing it together. In this case, it's going to be pretty simple. It's pretty much a straight line here, a straight line here. Shouldn't be too hard. Okay, first things first, I took my flexible tailor's tape and did some measurements around it. Um, I basically went right here at the end, four inches up and eight inches up on the stock and measured how much it was around each of those places and that'll give me some measurements I can work with to figure out exactly what size all this needs to be when I'm done. Then we're just going to need the shape of it. And it's basically straight across here so it shouldn't be, like I said, too bad. make a pattern. We're going to start by taking this lock off so it's not in our way. This is also an excellent time to mention that when I do do the decoration on this, I'm planning on working in some sort of theme like this um, side plate on this is a dragon. So I'm going to try and work that in whenever I go do the uh, carving on this particular piece. And then we also need to add on just a little bit of extra for the thickness of our leather around the edges of it. Because anytime you wrap a piece of leather around something, you increase the, uh, the radius or the diameter of that that you're wrapping it around. So you have to add in the leather to keep from having a gap when the pieces come together. Now, it's not going to be totally vital that these actually come together without a gap, because it's going to just be laced together, but it would help. So we're going to add just about, oh, I don't know, an eighth of an inch or so. Probably a little bit more than that in this case. Looks like I'm getting closer to uh, 3 sixteenths. And we're also going to do it on this back edge because I'm going to do a mitered seam along there. Since this back is pretty much going to be straight, we'll have to see if this fits the way I expect it to, but hopefully it will fit without having to have curves on each of these ends. The other piece we're going to need for this will be 
I'll trace the end of the buttstock to make the part that goes and closes up the end. That just about comes together, which means there might be just a little bit of a gap whenever we make it out of leather. But it shouldn't be a problem. Alright, and the other piece, we're just going to stand this up and trace around it. And again, we want to add just a little bit all the way around for the thickness of our leather. We're going to go further down on the belly of this side. This piece is not real super critical, but I am going to be carving on it. And as usual, I'm going to rough cut this off and then go back and cut it exact. when I don't have the whole hide hanging off. This is from an older, kind of drier piece of leather, so it's a little tough to cut. Probably gonna have to mess with that beveling that part after I stitch it as well. But the rest of it can be edge beveled right now. Now for a mitered stitching corner, you actually take and put like a 45 degree angle. edges. Let's see if this cuts any better wet. Okay. That stuff was being too problematic to cut while it was dry because it's old and dried out. So we're going to try it while it's wet. I went ahead and soaked it for a little bit and I pulled up my um, granite slab here, marble slab, whatever you want to call it. Uh, because I don't want to leave cutting board texture on the leather. Oh, and this tool is referred to as a French edge skiver. It's basically just a really wide edge beveler that I'm using for this. You could just use a really sharp knife, including round knives, but this is a little bit more controllable. And then when we go to stitch those together, it'll fit in there right against it. And we just stitch through at an angle. We'll go ahead and mark our stitching groove on this as well. Use our wing divider to mark some holes about an inch apart where our lacing is going to be on it. And we're going to go in full. About three eighths of an inch or so. We should mark that first. Let's mark in a little further from that. Not quite that far. That'll divide off our area we've got to decorate. Okay, so we've got holes marked. We can probably go ahead and punch those, but it's not necessary right now. They're marked nice and deep, they'll stay. Um, we've got our line marked where our border's gonna be, where our stitch line's gonna be. But now this leather's been soaked, 
for that um, skiving, so it's too wet really to do anything with on carving. So I've got to let it dry out some. So I'm going to have to set it aside for a while and come back to it after it's had a chance to dry a little bit. And then we'll mark up what we want to stitch in, or what we want to carve into it and decorate it with. Okay, so I let this dry overnight and it's actually still even a little wet from being soaked. But while I was waiting on that, I went ahead and drew up a dragon that I don't think looks too derpy. Kind of a mixed mash of modern and Celtic and Chinese style dragons. Um, and we're going to go ahead and use some uh, plastic tracing film to trace that so we can transfer it onto the leather. I've also added a second line along the outside edge here because I wanted a little bit more of a border. I'm thinking about a rope pattern on it, um, and I'll show you how I do that later. But right now we're to the swivel knife part so we can start cutting everything, and we'll start with cutting that border. Now I've kind of made myself a special little tool here, and it is, I took a veiner, I kind of beveled this back edge down a little bit, and then I took needle files to the inside of it, instead of having the round scallops in it, now it's got little V scallops in it. I made that specifically for doing scales on reptiles, because they normally have more pointed scales, whereas a rounded scale looks more like a fish. And I'm using this. Just like I would a veiner, I'm using it before I would go back and bevel everything so that I can kind of cover any mistakes I make with the beveler a little bit. Already looking fairly well. Now we need to bevel it. Backgrounding inside those, and we should have this guy. I mentioned matting tools in other videos. Uh, they're basically they're just little textured tools. They're almost flat. They got a bit of a crown to them, and they're just for going around when you're beveling and just sort of smoothing it out further, so you don't have this sharp drop in. And it can really make something stand out a little bit better from the background. Some backgrounding in these little areas. All right. The rope pattern I want to do on the edge is just use a pointed beveler with lines that run straight with it. It doesn't have any cross hatching, it just has lines on it. And you just kind of go down one side of the. and line up one of the long sides. And then you'll go down the other side. and you'll line up again one of the flat sides along there, and one of them 
lined up with the previous impression. So you kind of make these little diamond shapes. And once you've got all that done, you just take a modeling tool and round it out a little bit. And you got a rope pattern. Now I'm going to do that all the way around. Alright, now that we've got it all carved up, both our pieces, we're going to go ahead and just stain it with some antique stain. Just using tan colored antique stain on this one. Okay, I made some marks on each side of this where I wanted to stop the stitching, where this is going to end down here on the other piece. Punched holes all the way along there. Now these holes would not line up if I just punched the same distance apart on here. They'll probably be alright up to here, um, up to this where it starts to curve. But then they're going to actually get closer together on this piece than they are on this piece. So I'm going to just punch up the sides where it's fairly straight and they'll be close enough. And I'll stop and I'll start stitching this all together and then just use an awl to punch these as I stitch. Okay, I've taken some thread, there's some scrap pieces, and tied this in a few places to kind of get it in place to where I know where it's going to be. So I can have it held where I want it while I'm going ahead and stitching. And I'm just going to basically do a saddle stitch. Right. And I've got it stitched up to this. I just kind of didn't bother filming stitching because it's just hand stitching. It's a little repetitive. But I'm all stitched all the way up to where I ended my holes on this side and from here on out I'll be going through with an awl trying to hit into that stitching groove with each one of these holes. And stitching through them. And actually, in some ways, this is the easier way to do this stitch because driving through with the picking pricking irons, you're driving straight down through the leather. You can try to kind of angle through, but it doesn't work really well. But with the awl for each stitch, you actually get the holes lined up a lot easier to stitch through. Now I'm getting down to, oh, about a half inch or so between these. I went ahead and counted to make sure where my holes are going to line up. And I actually need about four more of these holes to come through. So I'm going to go ahead and get those punched through. But then I should have the right number of holes all the way around. And it's just back to stitching to get this done. Okay, now I've got it stitched all the way around, all the way down, and I back stitched about four holes on each side. Trim off that thread. I'm going to take it downstairs. I probably won't do this on camera. It's not really worth it. I'll just take it to the sander real quick and sand these edges at about, you know, a 45 degree angle or so and bring those together. And then I'll come back up and we'll slick all of our edges and put some lace in this and that's pretty much all that needs to be done. Alright, now just a little bit of dye on that edge I just sanded. And we'll go around the, the whole thing too, just to be sure. And then it's just some gum drag hand, gum drag, and a slicker. And 
part of the job of the slicker and the varnisher is to really get this nice and smooth and kind of blend those pieces together to where they stuck together without much of a seam there. It's just a matter of lacing it up, kind of like you would lace up a pair of shoes. Now I'm just going to throw a quick knot in this. And then we're just going to run some of this underneath to where it's trapped against the stock. And I'll need a lacing needle to do that part. You could just use a, a fit or something pointed to work it under there. And you want to be really careful, especially if it's not your firearm, to not scratch the stock up if you're doing this. And I'm going to run this all the way underneath here. That way there's enough extra on there after I trim it off that if it ever has to be taken off and put back on, it's still possible. If you trim it off real close, then you got to get a new piece of lace if you ever have to put it back on. Okay, and there is our rifle stock cover, or in this case, blunderbuss stock cover.